Sonic still just trying to climb the mountain as so many enemies are approaching them. Tiggleton, the fragger extraordinaire. I think a lot of us weren't even looking at Sonic. Damn it, these guys performed when it mattered. Your 2021 PGIS champions! Uh, they, were, they were kind of lacking, right? And that was off to such a strong start, but... Uh, I mean, the players themselves, they're saying they're back. They're, they're feeling themselves now. They, they had a couple of weeks where they felt lost themselves. Um, so, you know, hopefully uh, towards the back end, like we said, the, the two weeks that mattered were week five and week six. Um, they come into it with 40K. So, so it's still all to play for. I mean, this is, this is lower down in terms of the prize pool earnings. It is very far down. They, they peaked early Godspeed, but they seem to have sort of fought their way back and have made some big statements. They, this, is, this is their weekend. Uh, they seem like they've got the pedigree and the energy to potentially pull this off. So with the so southwestern circle now, uh, really this raised hillside peninsula that's sticking out could be a factor for a lot of these future fights. Burrom decides to take a shot, but Edie just gets rolled on. Sonic's on the hunt. Should spot out Kinex in just a second, but look at the spin back around. This guy is absolutely nuts. Lining up against Tiggleton and chasing him down. Door closes in front just to buy a little bit more time. Reinforcements now starting to come into it, but look at the read on how to play this one. But it's going to be a push from back behind. Shots up coming out, and Burom in a lot of trouble. They're going to be our first team eliminated. Not a lot of options. You can see really how they're playing inside that low ground position and how almost every single team that's playing along the hillside has some type of vision on them. On different points of the map, you can see a lot of these teams very much forced to play along the edge. Yeah, and you can see it's going to be Sonic's one of those teams that's in that bad position. Mime, the only one left here, just going to finish Tickleton off. You can't res him in the blue anyway, so there's no point to have him there. Just two teams remaining. Three members from T1 pushing into two from Sonic's. Finally winning control over the hillside. But there is a split position coming up from Sonic's. Notice Tickleton. He's got himself a nice little hidey hole. If he can wait and draw T1's attention towards this point, and then instead just capitalize off of a back push into them, he could absolutely destroy T1 from this spot. No one would expect it. He's got cover. He is so hidden from here. Everything is going to collapse right in between Mime and Tiggleton's position. So all pressure now onto T1. They have to know this. They have to know that somebody is already positioned up and waiting for them. The question comes into play. Do they have a read on where the danger could be coming from? Smokes now starting to draw out, drop down into points, and you can see T1 very, very nervous of this Western approach, trying to make sure that they keep an eye on it, making sure that they also try to keep an eye on where Tig might be hiding at. Mine has vision on the smokes coming through. Aqua 5 starting to crest up the hillside. Doesn't spot out anything just yet. Star-Lord now starting to play along that similar point. Molotov's out and you can see the smokes coming out from both sides. Options getting more and more limited. Mime has to be a focal point. Has to draw attention. Gets the knock onto one. Spots out Adder up towards the top as well. So now in a 2v2 situation, Adder has to reposition down and yet again, it's going to be Mime lining up headshot upon headshot. Tig knows where Star-Lord is. The last member for the squad. Now Star-Lord has all pressure nowhere to go gets the shots on a mime forces him into cover but where are you gonna go tig is waiting with bated breath for you to step just another foot or two down that hillside and there you go it's gonna be sonics walking away with a phenomenal victory that's huge the sonics have been great on miramar throughout all of this tournament and they're showing up big once again on the desert that is just really solid hold that just goes to show their map knowledge on, on Miramar is so high. The spot that Tiggleton in it is so great. Like you were talking about, Matt, it, unless T1 really has an, you know, kind of identical amount of knowledge of that situation, uh, they're not going to be aware that Tiggleton's there. It didn't end up mattering because Mime just was landing his shots so nicely. They have a great angle uh, to take from that shack. So really nicely done here by Sonics. All right, here it goes. 4AM looks like they're committed into trying to get kills around them. DXG is just going to be to the east of their position. TM is going to be pushing along that path. Sonic's caught up in the southwest from this, trying to make their approach, but you can see it is just a double team, in some cases a triple team, of everybody just getting vision on approaching teams. T1 rolling up back behind this one as well. Adder in a lot of trouble all by his lonesome inside of this positioning. 
Sonics and FaZe starting to line up against each other to the south as well. I'm going to try to keep you guys updated as this goes, but it is just going to be a massacre as Vision comes into play, and the circle is just forcing fight upon fight into position coming out from this. FaZe gets Vision under Sonics, gets it down, and the flush onto Shrimzy, but it's going to be repositioned. Mime gets spotted out as well, tries to go for the shots into it, gets a little bit of damage, but there's nowhere to go. Mime goes down as well. Buzzface just holding up this line for FaZe. The problem is he is going to have to move in just a moment, but he's going to be able to at least get a couple of kill points out of playing this position. Yeah, he did the best he could with what he was given, and it's a nice hold for Fuzz and a great angle to hold as well. And now it's Sonic's turn to get into 4 a.m. That's going to be two knocks for H win. He is going to fall to the circle, but he's going to take a couple of 4 a.m. with him. Well, they're going to leave uh, Lorena on the backside there to watch Zenith. Nobody was really able to dislodge Zenith from those shacks, so... It's an attempt that wasn't really a, a full-on attempt by SDK. Uh, as Sonics are ahead, Pat Caps, his vehicle's done. That's going to blow up, so he's going to throw some utility at Sonics in return. Uh, but they've got him potentially out in the open. Snaker's trying to provide some cover fire. Is it going to be good enough? Tickleton going to knock Pat Caps there. Snaker's the only one left for Oath. He's got a U.S. and nothing else to work with. I just want to point this out quick. The top three teams right now here in the final week are NA, Zenith, Sonics, STK, tied with Team Liquid. But heck of a day for NA here, really making a statement to start out this final week. Division X, IQ 500 down, but not out. Long K, pretty beat up. And H win in the Sonics trying to see if they can get that finish. There's smoke everywhere around him, so no shots really able to find the mark just yet. Phase quiet, but still four up. I like what we're seeing from Division X right now. This is, sure, they've taken a the casualty. They probably can't get the res, but they're starting to really try to force other teams to play around them instead of just being passive and letting people encroach onto them. Their problem is, can they control their flanks while they're keeping all their focus into Sonics? Instead, they're going to retreat from this, and you can see that as they're making the retreat, they're getting harried every single step of the way by Sonics, because Sonics doesn't want to relent off of this. Already at six kills, they know that there's an opportunity in front of them, but really it comes on how we see DXG opt into playing around this. Shoot to kill, repositions in, and oh, DXG's just going to hop in a vehicle and roll through. That might be a little bit risky as face <laughs> might have vision on him. h win does connect him to one, should be able to get flushed. Two do manage to make it away from the aggression and get to a kind of safe point. No, no, it's going to be phase. At least they take a compound. They've got something in this to play with, and now they've rotated ahead of the Sonics as well and kind of forced Sonics into a position where they have to cross some open terrain, potentially, uh, depending on what the vehicles are like for the Sonics. Maybe they'll just try to counter crash that position. I don't know. So Sonics and multi-circle gaming on a little bit more of a roaming strategy as options are starting to get more and more limited for them. The DXG send could be quite pivotal as it does manage to get them away from a potential fight brewing between the two. Pentalol, they're going to go for the res. Smokes are down, and indeed, Sonics are going to try to crash this. They're going to lose H win to Uba from the side. They're still hanging out over along that ridge line uh, outside of this radar tower, and Fergus and Long K can just kind of wait. I don't really want to see them go outside too much. I don't really think they need to unless they feel like they can get that point, I guess. That's fine. They can at least get H win. I suppose that's worth it there. I was a little worried that maybe somebody like FaZe or MCG might shoot into them, and now Sonics is just getting smothered here by multi-circle gaming shrimsy down tiggleton down sonics are out and we're down to our final four teams here in game number four for the sonics it might be best to try to knock oath out of the equation and then try to take that 3v4 versus t1 at the end but t1 Whoa, t1 they spot out that oath is in this shack this is really good isolation if they could get in here and finish pack caps off gives them a lot more space to breathe Sonics, realizing what's going on, really starting to huddle together. They don't have vision on what T1 is trying to accomplish. And so really it's a blind movement and Sonics doesn't want to overplay their hand. Instead realizing, okay, if we know a fight's happening with Oath, we know where Oath is, let's at least look that direction. Balefrost, still alive, opted to move away from the shack. T1 couldn't spot him out just yet. Now Sonics starting to get a little bit more vision, reveals it, Shrimzy goes down. Balefrost manages to hold up, manages to take down another one. North America destroying North America, and now T1 walks in. They have the opportunity to get this, and there is nowhere that we can see Sonics move away from that position. That was a Herculean effort coming out from Oath to try to at least secure a second place position, but it came at the cost of handing the victory over to T1. So a question for you. Uh, we are at now at the end of the eighth week long tournament, and you were able to rank number one on the first day uh, of the weekly last weekly final. How are you feeling right now? 
Well, we feel good, but it's not over yet. We set ourselves up for tomorrow, and that's all that's important. So personally, how are you feeling about uh, your team? Unfortunately, in the in week two and three, uh, you guys didn't make it to the weekly finals and had a bit of a slump, but you overcame that in the fourth, fifth, and this week. And I'm sure you guys are going to be approaching uh, this week's finals much differently. How are you feeling about that? Uh, it feels good. I think we're. Uh, it's been a learning process for us, but I feel like we've gotten better and better each week, and uh, we're ready to take that into future tournaments and tomorrow as well. So the way you guys uh, seem to play in each game, in the first match, uh, the way you guys played against Infantry, uh, Burian United, and in the last match against Infantry, it seemed like you were ready to take on any risk and uh, played a really attack attacking kind of performance. Uh, what kind of strategies did you guys talk about before the matches today? Uh, basically, we just talked about playing slow, playing our edge, and, you know, just trying to uh, control our area and then take fights based on where we are. So it just happens that, you know, we're right next to those teams. So it's fun fighting them. They're really good. So there was a moment in the third match where only Mime and Tiggleton, you guys, were left, and you managed to eliminate three players out of T1. Uh, it seemed like the way you guys were positioned that Mime, you were going to be uh, the one drawing attention, and then Tiggleton was more at the place where he could attack and achieve kill points. But it turned out that you uh, were the one that took the kill points. What was that situation like? Oh, I mean, we just played confident. I had Flex Gang Tig next to me. I knew uh, when when he was up and he got that angle, it just felt right, and everything just played out the way we wanted it to. So. And then in the final match today, unfortunately, you had to give up the chicken dinner to T1. Yeah. And at the end, uh, you guys had a one-on-one -on -one face off to T1. What do you think it's going to be like when you get to meet with T1 tomorrow during the match? Uh, T1's a great team. I love playing against all of these teams. They're talented. Uh, as long as we have, you know, four up we're playing confident, playing as a team together, then it should all play out correctly. So, gotta keep it up. So the point gap amongst the top teams right now are really close. And even a one kill point tomorrow could potentially turn the tables. Uh, what do you think, um, yeah. is there a specific team that you personally feel threatened by? I think that we treat all teams equally for the most part. Like, there's no real, real threat because in a 10 game format any team can pop off it just depends who's hot on the day particularly uh infantry is a very talented team particularly long skirt so looking out for them of course but it feels good to shut them down in a couple of games so today you guys have laid out the rough track uh to get you a step closer to the one and a quarter million dollar prize tomorrow and you guys are ranked number 14 with your prize money uh how are you guys going to be preparing for tomorrow's game uh, well, there's obviously a lot of pressures on the, pressure on the games because it's only five games tomorrow and it is a lot of money. So uh, we're just going to look to maximize our points in every single game. Uh, again, it's a 10 game format. Anything can happen, but every kill matters. We're going to play like that and uh, hopefully we come out on top. That Brew Rum had a little bit of trouble climbing the hillside, but the Venonica distraction really gave them a little bit of favor. Sonics, though, going to go ahead and get caught up in the skirmish on everything that's going into the north, and it's Jin G lined up against them, as well as a little bit of infantry being tossed into the mix. Jin G, not inside the safe zone, but firmly committed to wanting to keep out Sonics in the way that they're trying to approach this. It's just a red zone popping off over here as both teams lobbing nade upon nade at each other. Uh, I feel like either Infantry or 4AM is going to get involved in this sooner or later, but actually Infantry might have to retreat uh, as they are losing members to Phase's push, inching out towards them on the map. And they're going to actually get in vehicles, and that's not good. Longsker. Infantry is going to let you last. Logsker and Nine going to take three of them down. And yep, Infantry doing a great job holding them in. Now it's their turn to try to put some damage into Sonics. Uh, yeah, I mean, these guys are just trying to rack up points. They realize that the other teams around them have gone out, so this is their opportunity for Angry Men also trying to seize the moment, whereas Mime's just trying to roll ahead of the save zone, or the blue zone to get into some type of position for it. Not a lot of options to work with, and that's going to be Sonics going down in ninth. Well, Godby's got an AUG. He's going to get kickstart out in the open and take Zenith out. The second place team just got eliminated by the first place team. 4 a.m. Looking to put their foot down on top of the rest of these teams in this lobby. Mime gets a pretty decent grenade in there, gets some good damage. Tank and Lingdu trying to work the sides of the rock. Summer, they're going to hold on to this. They're going to stick this res. Summer almost goes down to those frags. Does not fall. Shrimzy gonna really cook one up. Is it gonna be well timed? Yes, it is. Gonna get the finish on to Summer. So the Reds does not come through. Now it's a 2v2 with MCG and Sonics. 
On the other side of this, you can see it's Burwam trying to hold back the four angry men, but it's not going to go in their favor. 13 kills now for four angry men. They fought their way to be at the top of the leaderboard, and they are showing you why. Multi-Circle Gaming, Sonics still caught up in this fight, and that means that 4AM has control over all the rest of the circle. Where is the circle going to go? And a smidgen of Sonic's compound stays in play. Mime gets vision onto Lou, but the hillside's going to add in enough protection, but he does go down. Mime lines up the shots, and this game is starting to come a little bit more open. That was great patience by Mime, showing you why we call him prime time. Comes up big there. That is a bit of a dent in the armor here for 4 a.m. First, it seems like... Sonic's kind of worried about MCG, and then we'll worry about 4 a.m. when we get to it. But again, 4 a.m. in the driver's seat of this one. 13 kills already in this game. Sonic's only at five, MCG is six. Those two other teams put together don't even have as many kills as 4 a.m. already has, Matt. Throwing a smoke in to try to deny some of the vision for Sonic's. Multi-Circle Gaming look like they might be opting to make their play. Are they pushing into Sonic's positioning? Are they going to contest against four angry men? Right now, it almost feels like it could be a mutually assured destruction moment. Multi-Circle Gaming pushing in, trying to crest up, but Molotov's going to come out, slow down the approach. The blue cresting in, making it oh so much more problematic for Multi-Circle Gaming. Tank, though, feels like he's got the opportunity. He's going to start leading the way. Mime still having to deal with harassment coming out from God V way off on the other side of the circle. Now, the fight is starting to break in. Multi-Circle Gaming advancing in. You can see Tank just on the other side of the doorway forever, starting to crest in, getting a little bit of an idea on where Lingdu might be playing from, and Tank has to make a play towards the top of it. Spots out Mime, gets vision on him, takes him down. Just one up for Sonics and a good read on how to counter move around that positioning. Lingdu now has to contest with Crazy, and you can see Multi-Circle Gaming has an idea on what's going on. Yet again, it is exchanged between the two of them. It's going to be forever. That's got the back of his teammates. Lingdu, though, starting to get an idea of what's going on, has to crest up, has to push forward. Multi-Circle Gaming goes down, and now it is just Shrimsy, the last one up, looking out, knows where Forever's positioning is, but has to fight against a high ground advantage for AM. Can he make something out of this? Looks like he's just going to feed it over the blue, and that's how we end it. Sonics managed to climb up the leaderboard, get in that tied for third positioning, but it's all going to be about four angry men. All right, Timbo, what you got? We've got Sonics holding down two different compounds. Tiggleton, the guy that's going to have to move. A lot of what's going to happen is going to benefit Genji, no matter which way that this fight goes. We're going to see casualties come into play, even if Sonics clean this up and they manage to walk out with numbers advantage over Tiemba, they're still going to be at a disadvantage versus already defended up, set in position Genji. Tig holding the line on the opposite side knows the fact that he can't move until at least Tiemba goes down. It's going to be shots ringing out. He does manage to connect with a few of them, but it's going to be H-Win that defends up for his squad. Trimsy aware that somebody's moving around outside of this. Very hesitant to go for the peak. Goes for a Trixie angle on it, and there you go. Sonic's managed to pick that one up at seven kills, and we've got a two-team lineup. Jin G fighting for respect, and Sonic's fighting to crest and get the top of the leaderboard. Well, like I said, Sonics have given themselves an opportunity. They don't lose anybody. And now Tiggleton gets a knock onto Esther from afar. Very nice shooting from the superstar for the Sonics. He has been great throughout this tournament. Shrimsy's turn now to look over this side of this hill. Peel forced to throw out some smokes. Loki trying to pin in Tiggleton. He's seen him. Now he knows he's got that fence line. Gets some pretty good shots. Doesn't get the knock. Gets the mini. Doesn't hit as hard as that SLR. Going to opt for the frag now. Heading in the direction of the Sonics comes up just a bit short. Now the smoke wall going to be laid out. Tiggleton, not a lot he can do at this fence line. He's pretty well trapped in there. The blue is on him shortly as well. But maybe, yeah, maybe this distraction from the flank of the Sonics can open up the space for him to get out. Oh, I think that Shrimsy saw that just around the edge of the smoke there. Tiggleton is distracting everybody from the flank positions. Can we see somehow Tiggleton trying to survive this one through? Can he draw enough attention from Jinji to not allow them to get any control on this? Shrimsy advancing forward should spot out Esther at any given moment. Crests around, they spot out each other. Shrimsy does manage to connect with it. One member of Jinji down. They had control over this one. H1 runs through the smokes. He goes down onto it. Good control, now popping back into Jim G's favor. Shooting into the smokes, trying to make sure that they can get the flush. They do not want the risk coming into play. It's going to be Shrimsy off in one point. Tiggleton is already down off of it, and it is just Shrimsy having to contest against a very strong Jim G. Pio just rolling around inside of the vehicle. Shrimsy, what have you got? No angles to control, and it's going to be a massive, great game coming out from Jim G.
Well, it, I don't really think this does enough to get them in the conversation for first. Maybe money. I doubt it, though. It's. I think it's going to be too far away. But a good win regardless. The real story for me in this one is going to be Sonics holding on to that second place. They are neck and neck now with 4 a.m. coming into this next game. Uh, the last game coming up, Matt, it is going to be a nail biter. Sonics, you got to give it to them, though. They fought for that one. They wanted it and they yeah. found opportunities, but it was so difficult. Gen G just had such an entrenched point and we're really just feeling the momentum of this. So let's go ahead and throw it. No life remaining, really. If anybody spots him out, a quick tap could reveal it. But Sonics, here's what's happening. And once the third party of this. Yeah, it's going to be Tiggleton watching, not wanting to pull the trigger just yet. He didn't really have a good enough opportunity probably to get a knock. It would have taken some just absolutely incredible shooting there to get anything going. And now you, now the patience is going to pay off because Pat Caps has rolled up into this. Wynn going to find the headshot. Tiggleton going to get the knock. Here comes the rest of Oath. Oath kind of with not much to play for here. Might just try to ruin the Sonic's day potentially if they want to try to fight this. Grenades coming out for when Bale Frost has been taken down by Shrimzy. Uh -oh. Pat Caps almost bleeding out. And I think this is smart. Snakers and Relo for any hope to have any kind of longevity in this round. They got to go now within distance to catch up to you. Yes, Sonics have come out of the shelter. It is Oath that's hanging around out here, just kind of drinking some soda and waiting to see what's going on around them. But Sonic's going to have to start moving. Lorena's going to see the Sonics put some shots in their direction. That's probably going to alert Oath that something's going on behind him. Back over towards Sonic. Still have to make a move at some point. Now Gen G has rolled up to the party, looking to see if they can maybe third party whatever happens over here. Raylo has been knocked now uh, by Flash from Day Trade. He's going to pick up that point. Venatica going to get knocked by Tiggleton. Uh -oh. So that might be the Sonics kind of changing directions. And that might be right in to Pio's waiting arm. They see him behind the tree, though. They know those grenades should be good. Pio Ooh. just narrowly avoiding being knocked. The Molly going to nip at his heels. It's going to catch him. That's going to be the knock. Now it is just Loki left for Gen G. Sonic's still four up on the edge. It's going to be phase below them, 4 a.m. ahead. This is a big fight. It's going to be a knock. On to God be there from Wynn. Tiggleton's going to finish Flash. That's another point there for the Sonics. They are now ahead of 4M. 4M has the cloud card here, Matt. This is super dangerous. And rolling into Sonic's position of all points. We've got FaZe back behind Sonic. Sonic's trying to gatekeep out 4AM. A couple of shots are going to come, and it's going to be shoot the kill that gets the initial knock onto it. Buzzface also looking down in the hillside. Gets a knock onto forever. 4AM coming in. They were the leaders, but Sonic has stepped up over them, and you can see it is coming apart for them. You can see 4AM has fought so hard to get into this position with the nade. Going to roll right in next to Crazy. Doesn't get enough to get the flush onto him, but the second one does. That's going to be... 4 a.m. eliminated, and the doors come open. Now Zenith has an opportunity. Sonics has the opportunity, but it's going to be FaZe Clan crunching down, trying to deny Sonics in the exact same way 4 a.m. just went down. The Sesquahana Sonics coming alive now. Shrimzy on duty with Buzzface. Hits a couple good shots, but takes a bunch in return. Gustav going to get the knock onto him. This could be the end here. They do get the res. Gustav spraying up over the top of the hill, trying to finish off Shrimzy when they're trying to res his fallen comrade stuns being thrown trying to see if they can maybe buy a little bit of time gustav coming up over the rock but it's going to be some return fire from the sonics sending him back down to go for the heel the res does come through shrimsy gonna let loose with something there i'm assuming that's a smoke try to cover this cover this angle of retreat and it is going to be good enough for now you can see sonics know the fact that their game depends on being able to take down the aggressors that have been to the north of them, or the south of their position, I'm sorry, and now going to have to reposition away from it. Could they find an opportunity? The grenade's going to land next to Fuzzface. Not quite enough, but the three-man stack from Sonics playing along the low point as Zenith getting vision on the team, looking on a different point. It's North America versus North America all over the circle. The Sonics still four up, still fighting through phase, doing a great job being tenacious. Tiggleton running along the hill, but there's some cover fire here. It's going to send Uba back. It might have been from SDK even in there. Shrimzy shooting along the tree side, catching a little bit of damage. Still SDK up into the circle. So for Sonics, they've got to get moving. There's a lot of time on the phase six circle. So they have a little bit of room to breathe, but for how much longer? Not much longer. To now reposition, realizing that a threat could be coming from their south. Phase has to figure out if they've got the opportunity and how firmly they want to commit into this. Uba gets spotted out. Tiggleton manages to take him down and flush him. 
We can see Shoot to Kill now approaching into this point. Shoot to Kill lines up, gets vision, doesn't get the down on the take. That's going to be Gustav on another angle that manages to connect. Luke 12 looks back over, spots out phase, making their approach. And this is a chaotic fight along the hillside. But it's going to be a lot of the aggression going back over in the direction of phase. Not a lot of options are in the move for. And 10 kills. Sonic still just trying to climb the mountain as so many enemies are approaching them. It's going to be AT getting spotted out. Finally going down, 12 kills for Sonic, but two members down, and just trims the up, now facing shoot to kill a huge round for the Sonics. It's all up to Shrimzy now. Looks like he is about to go down indeed. Purdy's gonna land the shots. SDK with 11 kills as well. There's hope still for every team that's left here, Matt. If they could get the win, get some kills, there's potential. This is nuts. Four of the top 16 are still in this. Circle does pop in favor of Zenith's positioning with shoot to kill shifting down trying to go for those kills they did surrender that point and allowed zenith to encroach into this hillside which is very very strong depending on how this lays out do note though we are only in phase seven there is still one more circle to pop and while zenith does yes control a lot of what's going on if this shifts into the south that will favor multi-circle gaming shoot to kill playing along the edge trying to get a lot of information and what is happening here as a firm calm is now rested and it's all about trying to get information and whoever takes this first shot revealing the positions for multiple enemies and a third party chain domino effect kicking off it's going to be a waiting game Zhao Ying he has no desire to show himself it's going to be really difficult for him uh, to over top the Sonics without something just absolutely wild uh, something like Petrelius's run early in the tournament is it's what it's going to take for him now Roth pinned behind a tree that's problematic Curry's got a pretty good angle on him here and now Roth the smokes are down that's going to allow him to get out good support from his teammates it's going to buy him a little bit of time and space I don't think Purdy saw him move over to the left maybe the biggest circle shift in PUBG esports history coming at us right now where does phase eight want to go it is moving away from Zenith heading down towards the prison MCG is going to be still in it but the final dot where that star is going to occur is going to be outside of the prison line this is going to be wild it looks like it's actually going to end in the rocks around the prison edge matchroom this is going to be a fascinating finish so now you can see that multi-circle gaming who's been quite quiet and content to let the other teams outside really fight this one out we're going to have to start making some decisions here soon as well as the last member up for infantry yeah, Zenith has to push, so they got to start getting into SDK's face. SDK trying to hold this ridge line as well as they can, but the opening grenades doing some damage here. A lot of utility still available for Zenith, and they are letting fly. They want to bust open this position. This could be the winning move. If they can dislodge SDK, they absolutely are going to be in the driver's seat to win this tournament. Stuns are out, grenades Shinboy are down. hitting Luke 12 in the face, but yeah, Shinboy gonna get knocked here by Penta. Penta trying to follow up. Kickstart gonna be on duty to watch Zhao Ying and MCG from the prison. Roth is gonna pick up Zhao Ying. Another point in the bag here, but Purdy gonna get the knock onto Poonage. Shoot to kill, getting a little bit more control over everything in the West. Multi-Circle Gaming is lining up in the northern part of prison itself, and that means that a pincer point is gonna be where Zenith is playing from. Only one member, I believe, up at the time, or two members up at the time, looking the position. It's gonna be Kickstart now going down, revealing just now one up for this point. Roth has to play this so cautiously. Obstant going for the res, and Shoot to Kill can't commit into it. They know where Multi-Circle Gaming is playing, so Multi-Circle Gaming would have vision on them if they tried to make any play for it. Now, Purdy getting a little bit of an eye on what's happening in Multi-Circle Gaming as they've been leaned in. No kills just yet for Multi-Circle Gaming, because remember, they sent it into this position. They realized the power from this point and how it could propel them into the late game. Purdy Curdy gets spotted out by Roth, as again, it's exchanged between these two North American teams, while Multi-Circle Gaming just waits Eats it out. Roth going for the peak, and yet again, another res. Purdy still down for shoot to kill off of this. Should be res momentarily, but it's the circle forcing everybody in. Do note, though, Tank it has repositioned away from the rest of his team and is now to the south and could catch anybody that crests along this hillside. Well, they've got an opportunity now. They're throwing some of their grenades and other things. Shinboy edging along the blue here. Grenades are out in the back lines. It's going to be Purdy Curdy getting knocked by Lingdu. They're going to step up. Zenith is down in third place. They fall short of the Sonics. STK and MCG duking it out for the final win here at PGIS.
Ling Du down, trying to pick up onto this. It's going to be Tank. He has been such a performer for multi-circle gaming, but there's so many angles that are popping off. You can see Penta all trying to get the vision onto it. Another member of Shoot to Kill down, and that's going to be Luke 12. Penta, the last one up, having to contend with two different members of multi-circle gaming. Spots out one, gets a tick of damage onto him, but now having to dance around in smoke. It's Evil Lee up into his face. Tank off into the distance. Spots him out, tries to go for yet another spray that does not connect. Everything hinges on this one point. Separates out both of these teams to decide who's going to get that fourth place position. Pinta has everything working against him right now. Lingdu has crawled out, revealing a little bit of what's happening, trying to get information for his teammates. Pinta's gotten spotted out. The blue's coming in. The shots connect and shoot the kill goes down to the blue. But Matt, look who it is. Your boys from NA are gonna do it. Your 2021 PGIS champions are the Sonics! Showing up would it matter, putting together a phenomenal game here. They strung together, they realized that everything was working against them. The circles just constantly moving away, but somehow Sonic's managed to string together 12 kills in that round to perform when it mattered. Damn it, these guys performed when it mattered. You love to see it, Matt. These boys came to play. What a final weekend. Huge performances all around from this team. Quinn is the shot caller, leading the way, doing a great job. Tiggleton, the main man from Australia. The Fragger extraordinaire, doing a great job. Mime and Trimsy, no slouches themselves. They are awesome as well. What a team, what a deserving win for the Sonics. It looks like we're preparing to give out the official win. And you can see as he writes the name on the check, it is official. The Sonics will take home a massive check over a million dollars and crown themselves the PUBG Global Invitational Champion. It's handed over to the Sonics. You see the trophy. You see the cash. This is the champions for the PUBG Global Invitational S Sonics out of the North American region. So along with the $1.29 million prize money, you're also going to be claiming the honor of being the PUBG champions. How are you feeling right now? On top of the world. So it's definitely been a long eight weeks during the tournament, and I'm sure there were some tough times for you guys as a team. Uh, when would you say was a particularly hard time for you, and what did you guys do to overcome that? Uh, I would say uh, week two and three, uh, we had our fair share of troubles, but I'd say the hardest for us was uh, week four and five finals. We were that close to winning, but we just fell short. Uh, so it feels good to win now. So even during those hard times, I'm sure your family members were also a really great encouragement for you. Is there something you want to say to them? Uh, yeah, we appreciate all our amazing uh, fans and supporters across the world, uh, but especially everyone who doubted us. Y'all just made us want to win that much more. I'm sure right now is probably the best moment for you ever. But if you were to choose a best memory out of the eight weeks in PGIS, what would it be? Uh, I think if it's not exactly right now, then it would probably be ranked decision. Uh, just knowing that you know, the team can bear up against the best in the world is such good confidence boost. So if not now, obviously, then ranked decision. So right now, is there something that you can say to each of your team members who have stuck with you through this eight week tournament? I love them. I love them a lot. <laughs> we went through hard times together and we stuck together and we believed in each other and we accomplished our goals. So we're also curious as to what's next for you guys after PGIS. Uh, what are your guys' plans moving forward? Uh, obviously, we're going to stick together as a team. There's a lot more events coming up this year and uh, a rumored Maybe confirmed, I can't remember. Uh, Global Championship next year, so we're just going to look to perform well in the regional events and then qualify for that. We'll take it Tanya, from there. then finally, a word for your fans. I mean, I think from all of us, we just want to say that we love and appreciate all of you guys. We see your messages and we see your support. Uh, to our families watching, we love the hell out of you guys too. You're all awesome and <laughs> I'm at a loss for words right now. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, you'll see here, and we join them as they prepare to hoist the trophy in the sky. Confetti rains down. It should be green bills because these guys have made $1.2 million and the bragging rights of the first Western team to bring back an international trophy of this level.